What makes a hat in time unique? Kickstarters have become their own subset of the indie game market. Created solely out of the love for a certain series or genre, they have the potential to rekindle a love of older times or finally expand on a genre forgotten in history. A Hat in Time was one of the earlier Kickstarter gaming projects, developed by Gears for Breakfast. Touted as a cute as heck 3D collectathon platformer, the developers were one of the first to aim for a revival of early N64 and PS1 era platformers. Although the campaign ended on June 28, 2013, and other similar Kickstarters came and went, Hat in Time was finally released on October 5, 2017. The wait was well worth it, as the game received positive reviews from all outlets. Despite having a smaller budget and being way behind on deadlines, it just goes to show that quality takes time, and it shows in the final product. What makes A Hat in Time unique is its focus on creating its own identity within the 3D platformer genre, making it a fresh experience that uses stable features to feel just like the era that which it honors. A Hat in Time stars the titular Hat Kid, a young girl who's trying to return home in her spaceship. Along the way, she passes by a planet whose resident mafia tries to collect on a flying boat tax. When Hat Kid refuses, the man pokes a hole in the spaceship, causing Hat Kid's timepieces to scatter across the galaxy. Hat Kid now needs to find the 40 timepieces she lost in order to power her ship to get home. The premise is simple, explains the need for a hub world, and begins the adventure across a variety of worlds. These worlds range from an island town run by the Mafia, a film studio where every mission takes place on a film set, and the dark and spooky Subcon Forest. When players enter a world or chapter, they can choose which act or mission they want to complete, similar to Super Mario 64. However, some time pieces are even hidden within other levels. These time rifts send Hat Kid to an alternate dimension where players have to complete a platforming trial to collect the timepiece. These areas are in heavy reference to Super Mario Sunshine, even drawing visual similarities. The opening cutscenes for every mission also play a quick overview of the mission, again similar to Sunshine, and the time rifts themselves are introduced similarly to the comet stars of Super Mario Galaxy. Each world is packed full of things to do and hidden items to collect as well. Although the game is touted as a collectathon, it focuses more on the puzzle solving and enhancing the player's arsenal. Around each level, players can find pawns, the game's currency, relics, which are hidden collectibles, tokens to spend in the hub world, and balls of yarn, which can be used to create new hats for Hat Kid. These collectibles lend themselves to being very similar to Donkey Kong 64, whereas collecting as many as possible isn't required, but their benefits will help players on their journey. Pawns can be spent on badges to augment Hat Kid's abilities, and balls of yarn unlock hats which give Hat Kid new abilities altogether. The game harkens back to many different eras of 3D platformers. It balances the structure of the Mario titles with the explorative feel of the rare platformers. Getting abilities has their purpose as a way to get more timepieces, but many missions are just simple point A to point B platforming sections, while others are focused on puzzles and exploration, such as the Golden Vault missions where players find the four pieces of a code to open the vault, and missions like Murder on the Owl Express which plays like a murder mystery. Despite the game's low overall amount of collectibles, A Hat in Time also focuses on defining itself as its own platformer that doesn't just live in the shadows of its inspirations. Despite borrowing all these features from other platformers, stylistically A Hat in Time finds itself with a cute, lovable presentation. Hat Kid herself is expressive and doesn't back down in the face of adversity. Each mission features a well-drawn title card displaying the act's title, plus the many light-hearted, funny characters around each of the many levels bring the world to life. The game also presents many nuances to its world, giving each level an overarching story. In Mafia Town, Hat Kid needs to befriend the Mafia goons over time, and in Dead Bird Studios, she has to help two feuding directors film their movies. Along with a simple new control scheme that allows players to platform and use the different hat abilities easily, it's not hard to say that A Hat in Time feels original despite borrowing a lot of the overall features from many early 3D platformers. A is jump, B is attack, right trigger is a dive, which is used for clearing long distances or going fast along the ground, and left trigger is the hat ability. Simple and effective. The hat abilities all have their intended purposes, but none feel overpowered. Even using the speed hat that lets players run faster is solely used for speedrunning. The witch hat gives a slow but powerful projectile, and the ice hat is simply just for ground pounding. The d-pad can be used to switch hats on the fly, giving players all their abilities at a moment's notice. 
Even the control scheme, although it looks like Mario or Banjo from a distance, feels different but easy to learn and master for any level of player. The controls are different enough to take some getting used to, but moves and abilities clearly define their uses, making it easy to figure out how to handle each situation. Despite the recent trends of poorly received Kickstarter projects, lo and behold, one of the first decided to take the time to carefully craft its world in order to achieve its vision. Despite the smaller budget and the setbacks, A Hat in Time feels handcrafted to feel like a game right out of the N64 era and could line itself up with other platformers like Mario, Banjo, Donkey Kong 64, and even the smaller platformers like Gex and Croc. From the importance of world building and using the tried and true features that platforming fans expect, the game isn't just a reimagining, but a transformation of the platforming genre that adapts it to a modern format. That is what makes A Hat in Time unique. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button, and if you'd like to see more videos that discuss what makes any video game stand out, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.